everyone. I want to share with you a project I've been working on. I call it the Normal Brush, and it's a tool I've been working on. It's an add-on for Blender, and it's to help you uh, paint normals and uh, do other useful tricks with normals, because uh, out-of-the-box Blender doesn't have a lot of great tools for dealing with that. So uh, I'm going to be posting this on GitHub, and uh, I'll also be posting it in the uh, Blender Market if you want to get it there. Um, but for now, I'm just going to post this video just to uh, give a uh, an insight into what it can do and how you might use it if you decide to download it and uh, use it in your uh, own workflow. So I'm going to be demonstrating on this little model here, so you can see it in shaded mode. I also have it set up with a very simple toon shader uh, because this is one of the things people might use a normal brush for to get rid of uh, shadows like this because in some cartoons this might look a little bit harsh and you might want to soften that down a little bit. But this is also going to be sort of a general purpose uh, workflow for tweaking the normals of whatever piece of geometry you want to. So let's go back into uh, regular shaded mode and uh, to get it started you just select your model and then if you look at the side here in this panel this is where all the all the buttons you need are and you can open and close that by pressing the letter N key on your keyboard or you can also press this little triangle right here that will also pop it out and uh, once the plugin is installed everything is going to be here underneath the kit fox tab so uh, now here are all the buttons that you need now the very top one is the tool that starts it all so if you click on start normal tool that will show you all of the normals of your selected object and that's a little bit long so let's take the normal length down a little bit so you can see all those normals there all right and now we're ready to start painting uh, let's actually switch back into the uh, tune mode whoops there we go so you can sort of see how this works. Let's actually turn that normal length down a little bit more. All right, so uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint in fixed mode. Fixed mode is a mode uh, where the normals all point in a single direction. And uh, that particular direction is determined down here uh, by this little control. If you click the checkbox there, you can uh, type in your direction explicitly. So, uh, or you can uncheck that to use a trackball to set your normal direction. Now, if you hold the cursor over your model, that little blue line there is going to show you the direction that those normals are going to be facing when we paint it. So right now we have it sort of set to a point straight up in the air like that. Uh, we can also if we move the trackball over there. Now we have a new direction that that's pointing that's sort of up and back a little bit and also move it down like that. And now it is pointing a little off to the side. Well, what we want to do uh, is have that pointing straight down the Y axis here. So I'm going to go back into exact mode and just type in that number directly. Okay. And Start that up again. So now we are pointing directly down the y-axis. Now uh, we're also going to turn the strength down to about 0.1. And now if we stroke on the uh, surface here, you're going to see that that's going to gently shift the direction of the normals. And those shadows are going to slowly disappear and can uh, even soften up uh, the curve over the eye here and this is a useful feature for uh, definitely for uh, doing cartoons uh, oh, I'm also you can also use the uh, bracket keys square bracket keys to uh, shrink and grow the radius you can also uh, adjust this to shift the radius too but uh, just like the other uh, brush tools in Blender, you can also use a keyboard. And anyhow, this is just a good way to play with your highlights. 
And if we uh, press Enter key to exit out, then you can see you have a much smoother surface there. Another way to choose a normal that you want to paint with is to use the Pick Normal button. So let's say we're painting this plane here. Let's start the normal tool up. And let's say we want to pick the normal from this sphere over here. Well, we're going to click Pick Normal, come over here, and let's say we want to paint in the, from that spot over there. Notice how the uh, normal we're painting with has just matched the spot where we just picked. Now when we click and drag on our plane over here, we're putting down normals facing that way. But let's say we then want to pick from over there. Well, we can click the Pick Normal tool again, click over there, and that switches the direction of the normal we're painting with. And then if we want to pick from near the top, we can do that as well. Maybe uh, see what that normal is. And this is just a quick and easy way to transfer the normals from a piece of geometry you're already working with if your aim is to match the normals of that geometry. All right, now let's set up a model from scratch so that it's going to play well with the normal tools. I'm going to press Shift A to create a new mesh. Let's go with uh, the default monkey mesh. And now in order to uh, give it the properties that it needs, so that Blender knows how to use its normals well. Uh, what we're going to do is come down here under the Vertex tab. We are going to open up Normals, and we're going to make sure that Auto Smooth is checked on. Now that doesn't make it smooth automatically. Uh, what that does is it, I think it creates an extra memory buffer or extra layer of stuff inside the mesh so that Blender can remember what the normals actually are. So what we're then going to do is, uh, well, we can smooth it if we want to by clicking on Shade Smooth, although we can see that did not shade it completely. So we're going to tab into Edit Mode, go into Mesh, Normals, uh, Set from Faces. And you can see that added a few um, sharp lines in there. That's OK. That's not going to affect anything. But more importantly, it looks nice and smooth. And we have uh, our mesh all set up with all the uh, good stuff Blender needs in order to remember what those normals are. All right, so moving back into uh, the tool itself, let's go on to Attract and Repel mode. So I'm going to press Shift A again to create uh, a plane axis, and this is going to be uh, the reference point we're going to be using with our normals. So um, if I click on Attract mode, this is going to give me a new field here, target. Target is what the normals are going to be pointing at, or in repel mode, what they're going to be pointing away from. So I'm going to click the little eyedropper, click on our target, and uh, the tool now knows that we're targeting the empty. Now, if now when I click on start normal tool and I turn the normal length down to something reasonable, uh, and let's give that a smaller strength uh, and I'm going to press the left square bracket key to lower the uh, the radius there. All right. So now because we're in attract mode, whenever we paint on this, those normals are now going to bend toward our, our attractor. And that might be fine if we're working on the face there, but uh, let's see we're done with that part. Now we want to work on a different part of the model. We can move our attractor somewhere else. Let's say over there and start the tool back up again. And now we can have those normals point to up there. And that kind of works out too. And this way you can sort of go around your model and uh, instead of having to explicitly type in the direction of the vector, just have it point towards this thing. It can be a little bit easier. And a repel mode works just the same, uh, except it makes things point away. So let's say we put that right in the middle of the model and we want stuff to point away from it. Click on repel mode, go back into our model, start the tool up again. And now we're pointing away from it. 
Okay, one more thing I should point out I don't think I mentioned before, the front faces only. When this is checked, that makes sure that only faces that are facing towards the viewer are going to be, uh, uh, well, are going to be affected. So anything on the back here is not affected. So even though uh, we are pointing away from that uh, axis in the middle, we didn't affect these uh, little bits on the chin though. Although now the now that the chin, the back of the chin is facing us, now it will be affected when we uh, click on them. And sometimes, uh, well, it's it's an option set presented here because sometimes you want that effect and sometimes you do not. And uh, the the radius of the brush is going to determine the uh, area that the effect is applied to, whether that's on or not. All right. Finally, we have vertex mode, which has a uh, whoops which has no special uh, extras here. What this does is it acts kind of like an eraser and it restores the geometry to what it was before. So now I'm in, now that I'm in vertex mode, if I click and drag here, you can see the original vertex information uh, or per vertex normals emerging. So, in order to explain this a little bit more clearly, I'm going to need to get into a bit of an explanation about the three different types of normals uh, Blender has. So uh, let's go into edit mode by pressing the tab key. Now, if we go into the viewport overlays, you might have noticed down here, there are three different ways to display normals in Blender. Now, the leftmost one is the vertex normals. So every single vertex has its own normal and it's pointing out more or less straight out from uh, the intersection of all the faces it attaches to. And uh, when we are in vertex mode, what we're doing is we're copying from that. We're using this as a reference to restore the geometry to something that uh, reflects the underlying faces. But if you go back under here, you'll see that there the, there's this other one. The second one here is the, it's called the split normals. If you read the technical documentation, these are also called loop normals. Basically, every single face uh, and every single vertex pair has its own unique normal, and this is what's used for lighting. You can sort of see it here where the, uh, the normals are a little bit split up. So uh, let's click on that guy and zoom in. So you can see there's actually four little hairs coming off of this. And that is one for each face or vertex pair we have here. So there's one vertex in the middle here, but it's connected to four faces. So this vertex face gets one normal, this vertex face gets one normal, this vertex face gets one normal, and uh, that one does two. And that is the same for every uh, face vertex combination on the model. And uh, that is why it's possible to have smooth shading or flat shading. Uh, what the brush tool does is it manipulates these vectors in the uh, split mode because that's the one that affects lighting. But uh, just so you know, when you are in vertex mode, what we're doing is we're copying from the vertex mode to the split mode. And there's also the third mode here, that's face normal. Uh, this doesn't really affect anything we do. Th this is used when we have the front faces uh, only option checked. This is just a quick check as to which faces in particular are pointing towards us, but it doesn't really affect anything else that we do. All right, uh, and I think that sums up the brush tool. Next, we're going to be moving on to the final option here, fix seam normals. And finally, we have the Fix Seam Normals tool. This tool is useful if you have a situation where you have two or more different pieces of geometry, which uh, all have an edge that they're sharing, and they all have vertices at the same positions along that edge, so that they're effectively snapped together. You can get the situation where you have a single piece of geometry and then you separate, separate out a section using the Separate tool. Uh, you can also get it if you start with two completely different pieces of geometry, that both have edges and you just snap those vertices of those uh, respective edges together. And uh, you get to the situation where the normals on one, pieces, one piece
piece of mesh does not match the normals on the other piece of mesh and you want them to match. Well, this is a way of copying the edge normals from your active selection to the rest of your selection. Now, um, in Blender, the active selection is whichever object you happen to have selected last. And a bunch of different tools use the active object. They treat it as kind of special, as different from the other, the other special objects. And I'm using sort of that same convention here. So uh, let's get into this and see how it works. Uh, notice, first of all, uh, Auto Smooth is checked for this model, and that means that uh, there's a little bit of extra memory that Blender is setting aside for uh, dealing with the normals. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a bunch of faces and maybe another patch over there. And now I'm going to separate them out by using the separate selection tool. And when we go back into uh, object mode, you can see that Blender has recalculated that seam there and left a pretty visible little scar line there. What we're going to do is merge that back together. Now, because we want to copy the normals from uh, this object here to the rest of the mesh, we're going to make sure we select this bit last. So let's select uh, the head. And if we had mul multiple objects, we could do more than one. Then finally, we're going to select the uh, original or the, the source there. And then we're going to copy seam normals. And when that completes, you'll see that that seam is gone, even though we still have two completely different meshes. And we could have done it the other way too. Uh, this mesh is smooth enough, either way would have worked. But um, depending on the model you're working, it might be important which ob object is the selected, which object is the active object, and which objects are the selected objects. And that is the brush normal tool. Uh, I hope you found this interesting. You can get the source on the Blender Market page that I'm uh, going to be setting up for it shortly. Uh, it's also going to be available on GitHub, so you can find it there. Uh, play around with it. See if you like it. If you don't, if you have any questions about how things work or if you have any ideas for how it might work better, let me know either on the GitHub page or you can uh, respond below. And yeah, I hope you find this useful. And yeah, hope it uh, makes you make your future models uh, that much more easy to make and more enjoyable to make. Happy blundering.